Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's the March 5th meeting of the Board of Sewer Commissioners. I'd like to call the meeting to order. And of roll call. Sandy Slavin. Donna Brock. Peter Donoff. And Jim Giberti. We have meeting minutes from the 20th of February. We get a motion on them. Make a motion. We accept them as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Now we have an abatement for 6 Leonard Street in West Wareham. I make a motion we accept, we recommend for this full abatement. Uh, in the amount of $317.42? Correct. Okay. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Another hard fought decision. <laughs> Guy. You're up, Mr. Campina. I am? Yes. Oh. Yeah. You're going to be queen of the May he right now. He didn't do his homework. I did. No. So I apologize, Mr. Chairman. I, had, I was on vacation last week. <laughs> and so I didn't Again? have an opportunity to prepare as well as I should yeah, have. Well. Um, so uh, it was kind of a crazy thing. Um, I don't know where to put everything because uh, of the agenda, but we'll, we'll, we'll do the very best we can. Um, I don't know where you want to put the uh, mine at Ave. We could discuss that or take let's, it old business and bring it up later so we can do that. Why don't we start with, why don't we start with mine at Ave, these gentlemen Just get them, out, get them out of here, I think so. Well, so. unless they want to stay and just enjoy the fun. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Looking. The entertainment. So mine at Ave. Uh, oh, sorry, excuse me, Mr. Chair, it's not on the agenda. I understand Did I that. miss it? I understand. No, I missed getting it on untimely. We talked about it last we time. That it? Last I meeting. know, but it didn't make the well, written agenda. Uh, okay. But I the, just thought okay. I'd bring yeah. that up that to discuss but it and we, needed to be on there. Okay. We told them that they would be on for this one, and it kind of slipped through the cracks somehow. It just didn't hit the paper. Yes. Hey, let's go forward. It was, yes, it was suggest we move forward to today. So, um, uh, so that would be lots four, five, and six on mine at Ave. We had discussed um, the ability to tie in. And um, I think after a tremendous amount of research and looking at the capacity, um, I think that it would be wise to move forward and grant, at this point, the ability to tie in with some caveats and some things we're expecting as they tie in. Um, a lot of the things we already discussed, you know, they haven't grinded pumps. Uh, we've got a list of things that they agreed to uh, that are pretty standard with the double um, catch, uh, check valves and that sort of thing. And, but where it gets dicey for me is when they actually make the tie in to the, to the sewer. Um, we can assume, and I know assume is dangerous, but we can assume that that 18 inch line um, is compromised based on the fact that we know that narrows is compromised. And we're working diligently to replace mine at, uh, uh, narrows uh, line on mine at Ave because um, it's that compromised that it could be in danger. So I think part of the agreement when they tap in, it has to be a collet tap, wet, absolutely. We need the collet to be analyzed. And I think um, we need to apply a bond in the event that something goes wrong. The engineers suggested around $100,000 bond that if the thing was to blow up, a $100,000 bond, in the event the pipe broke, then we'd have money to repair it. I'm sure they would repair it, but in the event that they didn't, then there would be money on hand to make the repair. Um, of course, once the, we're up and running, then the bond goes back and, and that type of thing. And I don't know the duration. I would suggest six months, but the board can probably give me a guidance on that, how long the bond should be in place. Because of the, the, the compromising of, of, of the uh, pipe, the option would be to wait till we analyze it. And we're going to analyze it in July. If they want to wait till July, then I will analyze the pipe. We'll have a definitive condition of the pipe. So I think because we don't have all the knowledge and we're making some assumptions on the condition because their sister pipe's identical age and they're beyond their life expectancy, I think we need to take all due diligence to protect that line um, on mine, at, on, it, which comes from Heinz Field Pump Station, which takes over the entire half of town and Bourne. So it's kind of a valuable line. This is this. Sorry. 
this particular project being tied into which line? Heinz Field? Heinz Field. They're not being tied into mine at uh, Narrows. Not being into Narrows. It's going to Heinz Field. Narrows is an unknown, and the assumption we're making and the engineers are making is because it's the sister line built at identical time, and it also has four elevation changes, which is more than the elevation changes on, on Narrows, coming from Narrows Pump Station. So we're going to be very cautious, and so that's why we think the conditions should be applied. Um, also, uh, the proposal they know that they have to record on the deed because the owners have to be aware that that pump station is there and they own it and, it's re and they're responsible for it. So nonetheless, that's what we would suggest tied into the condition to tie into the sewer. Why is it being tied to Heinz Field versus Narrows? Because, because of uh, location? <clears throat> Narrows comes up <clears throat> to just beyond, uh, right around, um, I want to say, for reference, Brandy Hill Apartments, and it shoots okay. down to the river, under the river and up. All right. Narrows comes up, meets it, and runs parallel to it. So there's two separate lines coming to the plant. One line is all this area of Wyham, and one line is all, all this area of Wyham. If we were to lose that line, then we take out the entire, uh, uh, I would call it the eastern side of Wyham and town of Bourne. So it is a critical line. So, you know, we feel that the bond of the engineers and, and, and major discussion, we believe that the bond is appropriate in the event there is a, 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 a failure or a break or whatever in the installation, then we have money to move forward. Not saying that they wouldn't do it, but this is assurance. It's like insurance for anything else. So that is one of the things that they're really we're pretty, pretty strong about. I mean, they've never done it, but in this case, we think it's, 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 um, it's, it's appropriate because of the, uh, of the, of the pipe itself. What's the feasibility of tying in where the elementary school ties in? So it wouldn't be, we wouldn't have to physically tap the 18 inch line. It isn't. Matter of fact, uh, it's a good question. Uh, we're abandoning that pump station and they put a new pump station and they're going to tie in again. That's yeah. going to be a year and a half away and I don't think they want to wait. But at least at that point, we, we have a valve that we could, uh, you know, they're not cutting into our pipe. You, you tap into a pipe. And you put a, and I be, I'm not so sure, I believe it's going to be um, probably an inch and a half, too much. I haven't seen the plans to there. I've seen it, so, and I don't have it in front of me, so I can't say, but you're going to tap that one tap into the pipe. To have multiple taps, to put, it, just, it just isn't going uh, to it's, work. It's it scares the life out of me. It, me too, but I mean, I think in the event that we have a problem, then we should have bond money, but yeah, it scares I, me because it's an unknown. I, is is the homeowner aware of how, important that line is Absolutely. to us? I believe I, I expressed that line because it is a force main, and it is our Would main you? force main all of where I'm in Bourne, uh, half of where I'm in Bourne. So it's, it's a critical line. So what's the status of one, two, and three? We haven't got there yet. That's next, that's next meeting. Well, one, two, and three we talked about, but the, the permit's expired. Yeah. There's no permit on So they're starting the process again. So that's have to come in front of the board again and apply, ask to tie in. So but that's, that's a capacity issue. I'm, I'm worried about the physical. Yes, me too. And that's why I'm saying collar it. It'll add strength to the pipe as they drill it. So we'll collar it, tap it, and a bond should give us assurance that if something did happen, we can repair it. Because, well, I mean, I'm nervous too. Well, $100,000 isn't going to come anywhere it, near. It's, for the repair. It's they, they repair. 75 percent of our town yeah, if it, that pipe is gone. It, it's wiped out. I mean, it shuts Wareham down. So I, I'm cautious of it, and so um, I, again, um, I was thinking more because of environmental impact, et cetera, but the engineer said no, if they broke it to take a cut of section and repair it, it would be about 100 grand ballpark off the cuff. So they'd be responsible to fix it. Um, then we'd have to address if there is an environmental, because that's a force What do we do main. in the meantime? Uh, well, we're going to have to figure it out. That's a lot, yeah, that's a good point, because that's a lot of uh, bypassing. Yeah. I mean, it's tremendous. It is. It is. It is. It's not it a is. case that we can go back to the narrowest pump station and truck it. No. No, we got to, to Heinz Station. It shuts down Heinz, Depot, Dix, Cohasset Narrows, uh, Hill well, Street, uh, Salt, wa Salt Works, and the, Highway Village. But that's the trouble. Between the pump station and where they're going to actually cut into it, there's no place for us to seal it off. No. We're no gonna, place for us to isolate it. I would have to try to go back to the intersection of, uh, of Great Neck Road, uh, Onset Ave, and, and try to excise those valves. Well, those valves haven't been excised in years, and hope I can get the valves to shut off, but I, I can't even promise that. It, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a deal. It's a, and they got to wet tap it because they can't shut down, so it's going to be wet tapped. It seems like a poor deal. So I just want to make the board. So uh, and engineers suggest 100,000. The board, whatever you feel is appropriate, but I, I'm nervous. I'm, I'm nervous. 
And you're recommending this? No, I, under, under those, I'm, under I'm those conditions, under those conditions, you know, the wet tap, the court, the, uh, the collar, $100,000, yes, at this point, um, if you feel there's $100,000? Yeah, that's the recommendation I got from the engineers because that's what it costs to replace it. They just think a replacement cost. Not what do we do in the meantime? You know, we never thought about the bypass. That's a huge amount of money. Because we, we have to pump everything. We have to truck everything to the plant. I have oh. to shut down every pump station, pump every wet well to the plant. But the thing is that there's no way to isolate it that if you, if you wanted to truck it from the Narrows, sure, you could do that. But what are you going to do about isolating it's a, it's a Oak main. Street and all of that, no, that stuff because main. it's be, beyond oh, the Narrows? Because it's a force main, I would go to the pump stations that everything feeds into. The, for, the main force main is depot. Everything ties into depot. That pumps to the plant. Heinz, everything pumps to the plant. So everything behind those would come to Heinz, and I'd just keep pump trucks pumping Heinz. I'd just keep pumping Heinz and take that which would be a tremendous, and tremendous cost. Could there be enough time for all these trucks to offload and, and because it is so slow to discharge their yeah, that's, that's, that's material to get oversight. back, you could very well have five or six or seven trucks constantly backed up oh, trying, no, and to, trying to discharge for the volume they're going to be picking up. Oh, right. just, but on the discharge, you'd probably discharge it into the lagoons, wouldn't you? What do you mean? If you had this kind of a situation, you had to do that kind of trucking. I would truck it right to the plant, right to the, I'd take the headworks, just pump it in. Yeah, right but that only, that only takes so much at a time, so you you're, It, it, it you're, does, but it'll do natural process. I want to take it through the screening and the whole nine yards, stand. and she would split. Some would go to the lagoon, some would come in, yes. But, but would go to the holding lagoons that we have right now, or the new lagoon that you're putting in? No, we're going to go to the headworks. Yeah. And when you put it into the building, it'll go through the screening, and it'll just be a high flow. And when it gets to the splitter, after it's been screened, yeah. and grit removal, then a percent will go into the plant, and a percent will go to the, 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 the existing EQ basins. So I'd put it like a, it's like getting a surge. I'd do the same thing because I don't want all the grit and rags inside the plant. If I put it into the lagoon, I'm going to get into my splitter. It's going to go right through my system. So I would do that to isolate it and, and to clean it up before it goes through the plant. That's how I would handle that. But this is, a, you know, I didn't take, we didn't take this on exercise to the next level if there was. We were, we were just thinking we'd fix it, but you're right. That that's, that'd be huge because if, if it did break, and I'm, gosh. So that, that's where I am with it, and I think maybe. I still don't see how you're going to isolate it. I mean, pump I, it's a force main, so everything pumps to force main, the for, uh, pump station. Right, pump station. but. So I would isolate it. But even, if you shut down the narrows, you still have Oak Street and everything else feeding into it. No, but that narrows is separate. This is the other side. This is the other side of Wareham. And, and that's where Oak Street and, and all of that is, no, downstream of, of, of the narrows. We're, gonna, we're talking about the Heinz pump state. We're talking about the Heinz line. This is the Heinz line. Not the narrows. Not the narrows. Not the narrows, yeah. <clears throat> Here's where we're talking about cutting the pipe. Right yes. Right. What yeah, sure. all of this? This is, is going to keep going in here. This, effect but how are you going to isolate this? No, this is two separate lines. They're two separate lines. Yeah, those two separate lines are here. The two separate lines into the plant. Yeah, but that's here. So they're tying in. Uh, so let's, okay. They're tying so, in on Minot Ave right, right here. So this right. line comes up like this. It comes from Heinz Field. It meets Depot Street. It comes up here and then it goes into the plant. No, this the, line comes in and goes up the plant here. The plant is here. Now, the plant should be right about here. No, it, well, that's my point. We're, the, the plant is here. We're below it. No, we're, just for clarity, the line we're talking about is the line that comes from Heinz Field. That's why we have no knowledge of the condition of it. So if this was to blow, it would shut all this down, including blowing. Not this end? No, this end would continue to go down narrow and come into the plant. So we're talking about this area here. Everything east of uh, east. So right. that's so all on it? All on it. In the Mountain Beach. Okay. Uh, 6 and 28, yep. uh, Hideaway Village, and in, in downtown Bourne. Yes. So it is a critical uh, line. It, it, they're both critical. So again, it, it, it's not you that's scaring me. It's we know this is a 50 year old pipe. Right. I understand that. And we're, we're not looking to uh, cause any problems, obviously. So well, it, it's one conditions. of the things that we have up that, that's in the works to be relined. And it, it's that important to us. And it, the reason that we're having trouble figuring out how we can reline it is because we have to build a bypass because we can't shut it down. So, and, and not to over speak, but we're actually going to replace it. 
because to bypass it and to line it, too, it's, it, we can't do it. It's too expensive. Too costly. So we're actually right now that we're designing. Can you wait two years? We're designing narrows because we know that that's already in trouble. So we're designing right now to put a new force main coming from narrows to the plant. We're, that should be done in a few years. We're designing and we're going to build it. And that line is not what we're talking about no, now. It's a okay. separate line. Thank you. And so we can make the assumption that we're going to do the exact same thing to that line. That means that we've got to put a new line in and, and do the exact same thing. But that's going to be happened after Narrows is done because we've so, moved so forward with Narrows. five or six years, so we could be creating a major problem. Are we? Well, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a gamble. I, I, you can assume that's going to go fine, but if it doesn't, this, it's a major, major, major exposure. And there's very few people, I'm told, that can do this work. You're going to have a really, you know, it isn't Harry in the backyard, you know, local contractor's not going to tap in because of the intricacy of it, the size of it, and the condition of it. And some's going to have to be able to hold a $100,000 bond. If you feel that bond should be greater than that, I have no problem with it, but some's going to have to hold that bond if we move forward. And I think a contractor with that, you know, that, to me it's, maybe it's not, but $100,000 contract that can carry that bond is probably going to be able to handle this job because it's a big job. I think my engineers suggested there's three or four people that are capable of doing this job because of the complexity and the severity of it and the, and the risk. So that's where I've been with the research and talking and again, these are recommendations by an engineer and um, uh, Wright Pierce Engineering uh, and they feel that the very least is $100,000 bond on, to repair the pipe, but we didn't talk about the repercussion. The cost of keeping the town running if there was a break, I couldn't even put a price on it. It's, it's probably thousands of dollars a day, um, depending on how long it takes to make the repair, to dig it up, and that's not gonna happen overnight. So it's gonna be thousand dollars. We're gonna have about nine, 10 trucks at 200 bucks an hour. So you're, you're, so you're, so basically you're prepared to say that this is your recommendation, what we do? That's what you're saying to us. That's what you get Save the big. The risk. Yes. That's Save. what you get the big bucks for, my friend. Yeah, well, I'm telling you, if, if for me the big bucks, I, I gosh, I asked the engineers for you know to be frank, a five million dollar bond. They said, well, that's that's a lot. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. I, I, I got to tell you, I'm nervous. I'm nervous as a cat, you know, you know, in a, in a room full of rocking chairs because the exposure is tremendous. It's tremendous. But again. Um, we haven't tapped narrows for years, and I'm having the same conversation with the school. Because they want to tap it in 2021, and I, I don't think we're going to have the line in. And I'm saying the same thing. You're tapping that, and, and, you know, I'm really, and they're putting a huge pump station. I'm really nervous about that. So we have to, we're going to have the same conversation as to what they expect to cost me. I'm trying to have them go back and tie into, into uh, narrows. But and nonetheless, we know that's weak. So that's the same situation. We, we know for a fact that that's compromised. That's 70 to 90% deterioration at certain points. Do these homeowners know this impact when they asked for permission to use our sewer lines? Were they aware of this type of? No. I don't think to the extent we, but we, I, I think we no one told them that. The no, we're just finding out now, so how would they know? Well, you know, no, realistically. When they, they must, call, we, we they call, call to say we need to main. tap in into force main and okay force main. So from that point, we look at the impact. Yeah. What's the impact? And that's where we go. We, we need to know the impact. And the contractor didn't look at the impact. So I, I absolutely talked to the engineers because I was really concerned because we have no knowledge of that line whatsoever. So the engineers recommend a hundred thousand dollar bond. Yes, replace. Well, that's, that's that's the work to replace. That's, that's, replace I understand that. That's what we're talking about, though. Okay, so they, re they recommend a $100,000 bond, which doesn't seem unreasonable in light no. of the c potential situation that exists. Uh, looking at the information that we have on the Narrows pump station, it is a deteriorating line. It does need to be repaired, replaced. <clears throat> and we've opted for the replacement. Our assumption is that we're gonna have the same situation with the uh, Heinz Field line. That's correct. 
But we're not going to be able to. But we don't have any indication that it's going to be worse than what we found with Narrows. That's correct. We have no idea. Uh, so we're going to make the assumption that it's going to be similar because of the. And it's going to be three to six timing. years longer before we replace it. I understand that, but we've. Uh, we could still, if you know, push came to shove, we could extend out the Heinz Field replacement. I'm not the Heinz Field. I'm sorry, the uh, Narrows. What do you mean extend it out? And if we weren't going to do it today, if we did it three years from now, we'd probably be pushing it, but. We would, Still and that's, do it. that's again, because I, uh, two years ago, the but recommendation is due within five, but that's fine. I understand, that's, I understand yeah, it. That's, that's, so that's, that you're still in the same ballpark areas. Uh, so my assumption based on the information that we've got to deal with at the moment is that probably a $100,000 bond makes sense. We are probably not, you know, hopefully not have any kind of issues. Uh, and that we will be able to get to the Heinz Field line within the next three years. Well, we'll start the engineers. We've been at it for two years in design, so yes. Uh, at, least, at least three to four years, maybe a little longer. But at that point, once you put the main, we have to switch all the, all the connections over. It's this one, two, or three connections to the main. There's three, There's th three dwellings, and how many, how many cuts will be made to two the main? <clears throat> There's two ties. From the three homes? Yes. OK. No do we do a $100,000 bond for each connection? That may be wise. They said they were talking about a connection. That's may the corrosive wise. study yeah. done three years ago. Uh, Guy, is there no way to make this, uh, you people also? Uh, make this one connection, put the three of them together and make it one connection? No. Uh, my engineers highly don't, they're against it totally. There's, um, when you talk to them, and they want separation. They want separation, and, and so I'll get the exact, but they, I think 25 feet or whatever. If they don't want them close to each other, they really don't want them together. They, because you're drilling in the same pipe, same place, you increase your odds of damaging that pipe. Well, no, what I'm saying is that, is there a way to bring one line and three one ties? Line Three tie-ins to one line and put one line into the. Well, then maybe you could put a pump station on on the side of the road, pump into that the other houses, and then pump one across. So it's adding another system. It, it's, it's all doable. But why couldn't you reuse the one at the at the at the the elementary school? It's too far. Well, I'd have to get across the street. Uh, and up and, the hill. In, in, up the hill and around the corner, it'd probably be cost prohibitive. Yeah. Is it that far? Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a run. Mr. Chairman? Yes. We have a study here done in two, June of 2017 by Tech Environmental, and it specifically says the three branches feeding the plant, Narrows Branch 1, Depot Street Branch 2, and Heinz Field Branch 3, all have significant corrosion potential in them as well, though not nearly as much as at the plant. A significant conclusion is that the corrosion potential at the plant is formed in one, two, and or three branches after the last pump station and before the plant. The concentrations were much higher at the plant than at any of the last pump stations prior to the plant. Based on this finding, each of these lines should be examined for the effects of corrosion and the plant should consider options to reduce the corrosion potential in these branches prior to the plant. So we've, we've, done actually, that, we've done that so with we the did analysis. We're adding uh, chemicals to the pump stations to <laughs> reduce the corrosion, which is caused by hydrogen sulfide. Yep. That report speaks of corrosion throughout the town. The town of Wyoming has major corrosion. The pump stations are corroded. The plant's corroded. We've made that statement, and we've got to rehab tons of pump stations, absolutely. We've done nothing over the years to protect our infrastructure. That's fine. So it's not getting any worse. No, well, we're, trying, we're, we're doing something about it. We're adding chemicals. But, but I, you well, know, I can't but say it's getting so worse. So it's not getting any worse. Obviously, that. it isn't any better either. It's not any better. But I, I don't, yeah, I can't see either so way. So if they're it. citing corrosion then, 
And this is three years ago. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that study, we, we hired that study because we have major issues with odors, and odors are generated by corrosion. When you smell hydrogen sulfide, you're smelling corrosion. And usually we think about just the odor of hydrogen sulfide and the inconvenience to the community, and we don't relate it to the corrosion of the system. So when you smell odors, you're smelling our system corroding. Mr. Chairman, I, I have a suggestion. I mean, I don't want to hold these people up any more than anyone else here. That's the last thing that we want to do. But I'm not prepared to, to, to move forward on, on the information we have. If we could have one of the engineers in here, and if they could say to us, hey, this is going to be, a, this is going to be okay, I don't have a problem. But right. to put ourselves in a position of making a decision like this that could come back and bite everyone in the butt, I just, I, I'm just having a lot of problems with it. I, as I said, I, I want more than anything to approve it for these folks. However, I just, it's just my feeling, guys. For what it's worth, I, I, I can't, I can't personally vote to, to do that unless I talk, hear it from an engineer. Sandy, anything? I, I feel very much like Donna, but again, it's not their fault. No, it's not. But uh, I'm petrified of them cutting into that pipe. My question is, are we trading off the capacity for the one, two, three lot to put it on the four, five, six lot? Are we switching off? Is that what we're doing? No. Yeah. I heard a yes, yes and I heard a no. So we, haven't, we haven't discussed lot one, two, and three yet. Okay. Well, one, two, so, three, if their permit has expired, then as far as I'm concerned, that's what we're using. But what, that's, what? That's, I mean, because what I'm saying is that if, that if that's out, they're not doing anything, they haven't done anything from day one, I, I, well, they're gonna be I'm the not going to sit on allocation just for the sake of oh. sitting then, on allocation. Then Nick's question is, what is the capacity we're putting aside for these three structures? Well, I'm not sure. It's, very, it's limited. I think it's 100,000, I mean, 1,000 gallons. A, a, a thousand gallons per day. If I remember all three, I'd have to do the numbers. You've got so you've got I six we had 22, units of two hundred. So six, that's twelve hundred per. So twenty-four hundred gallons per day, roughly. Because I thought we said twenty-two hundred for buildings one, two, three. So we're talking two hundred gallons per day per unit. I think the two bedrooms, right? Yeah, yeah. It's six. So what's six times? That's twelve hundred. Okay. So we're putting aside twelve hundred per day for these three units. The twelve hundred or twenty-two hundred. Twelve. So yes, twelve. But if you add the other one, then you then no, you double we're, it. we're just talking about, about this four, five, yeah. six. So yeah. we're looking at a twelve hundred okay per day capacity, and we're still so one, two, three is still have their numbers, right? Still have the capacity. No, one, we two, haven't three. taken it away it, from one, two, three. We ha haven't given it to them because they are, it ha they have expired. But in other words, it has come meeting, back into here. Last and meeting we, we said- We did not know that it, had been, it was expired. This meeting, we know it's expired. We asked at the last meeting how many other contracts are out there that have expired that we can get our capacity back, right? That was one of the there's, big ones that were on the table. There's one of them. There you are. You're, you're absolutely So right. theoretically, yeah. we're going to say if you haven't worked on it and it's been beyond the days for- your contract, you've lost the ability to tie into sewer. Essentially. <clears throat> yes, go right ahead. Speak, please. So again, I'm Joe Pavlik from Outback Engineering for the record. And um, so I've, I'm the engineer on both lots one through three in these three lots. And um, as I had mentioned at the last meeting, there's two separate builders involved, two separate owners. And on lots one through three, um, building permits were issued for lots one and two. And the lots have been cleared, um, work is underway, um, but it has stalled at this point for personal reasons. I'll leave it at that. Um, and um, so it's now lots four, five, and six that there's another builder involved. And um, so I guess we're, we're going to be back here before you next week 
or, or uh, at the next meeting for lots one through three, um, requesting those connections so, again. So, the, so we either say no today or no next week. We've got to say no to one of them. So that's, that's where you're going to be at right there. So. Okay. Okay, well, this is out, opened up right now. Guy, what's your considered opinion? Um, uh, four, five, so six, one, two, three. One, two, three? Yeah. To be frank with you, I have no opinion. I haven't thought I was going to wait for next. I haven't thought about it because it was on next week's agenda. So I really haven't talked thought about one, two, and three. All I know is that the permits are expired. I get that through the town. That's all I've done with it. And so I'm reporting to the board that there's no permits on those properties. That's all. And so then we're going to talk about the 19th, and you know, um, you know, and that's that. I have no. I did nothing since Wednesday, being in the hospital Thursday, until Monday. I have no. I have done nothing with it, so I will pick it up. My plan is to discuss to study it because it's on next week's agenda. I wasn't even planning to discuss it tonight because it's a separate issue. But we're just talking about. And, and this process. memo, this memo that you handed me, it, yes. it says the lowest yes. amount that I would so I asked consider. The board, that's right. So I asked the board 000. to recommend it. You tell me, but that's what he's saying: hundred thousand. And he talked about bypass the whole nine yards. In replacement, so it's there, and that was his recommendation. So the lowest, so the board can set higher, but that's what that says. That's from the engineer. Depending on bypass pumping. By what? Bypass pumping. Oh, so, here. Look at it. so you can that you can feed off that. So when I see that, it's not like he's he didn't say absolutely not, but he does have a concern like everybody else because he knows narrows. And he's not too comfortable with Heinz, but that's why he said you collar it. So before you even tap into it, you collar the whole pipe, you put a sleeve on it, and it protects the pipe, then you tap into it. That's the, you know, that would protect the ability to tap into it, so that's what he's recommending. So you're going to actually go sleeve the pipe, put it around it, you're going to couple it together, you're going to bolt it, it's going to be strong as a nail, and then you're going to drill into that. That's what he's recommended, which is not routinely done in the industry. But that's, you're going to collar it, and you're going to sleeve it, and you're going to, and you're going to tap it. And that's his recommendation because of the condition of the pipe. So by collaring it and tapping it afterwards, what you're doing, you're essentially strengthening the pipe at that particular point where you have to go into it. Absolutely. So yeah. it hopefully uh, it doesn't absolutely. necessarily negatively impact the rest of the pipe. That's what he's saying. And I, what I neglected to get is how long he wants that. And I can, I can clarify that. They may want it to be 6 inches, 12 inches, 2 feet. I'm not so sure. And then you tap into it, and you've got the pipe clamped and right. strengthened. That's, so I don't have it, but I'll ask him for clarity on exactly what he's looking for. But that's, all he, that's the only way he would do it with, with the collar <coughs> of the pipe to be protected. Okay, with those, consi that. those considerations. Uh, Can I ask the engineer a question, Mr. Chairman? Okay. Are you familiar with our policy on connecting to a force main? Um, not entirely, no. Have you seen it? No. One of the things it requires is a holding tank for 48 hours in case your pumps go down. I, I don't see that any place on the plans. If there's any conditions like this that you need to include in the decision, then by all means we're amenable to doing that. The new E1 pumps, the policy was written in 1999 originally. Back then you had tanks. There was no E1 systems. Because they have the ability to plug in and pump them down, um, if there was going to be the consideration, the consideration would be to have a generator on site, something on that line, because they're, they're, most of them are probably 100 gallons max. There's not much room in these, but they constantly cycle. So um, that's why they put power leads on the outside. The ones we have, we're, we have provision to bring electricity and put them on. So that would be the caveat. So you may want to generate or something, and that's fine with the board. I, uh, that, that wouldn't be outlandish. But yeah, nonetheless, that's the response. What's that consideration now? So they what, should have is what a generator. A generator. That's so, already that's already been established. Is that not correct? Well, we talked about it. I that haven't already, seen any policy. There's no policy on generator for. Is that been established in these plans? No, no. There is no. There's no speaking okay, of so if we the need, power goes down. There is no provision for it. No, there isn't. There's none. They were going to leave it to the homeowner because in the deed. So you need to address the, We need to address the power supply. In the event well, of, frankly, yeah, I agree. But frankly, the person that buys it, if they have total knowledge, that's why we ask that on the deed. It says you have a pump station, 
um, you're responsible for it, and they make that decision because it's not going to affect us. It's going to affect the crap out of them, but it's not going to affect us <laughs> because they're not going to be able to do anything. And so that's going to be an individual decision that the homeowner is going to have to make. But you've got to present that to them so they can make that decision. But if the board feels a gender is appropriate, then we can add it to the list. Absolutely. Is it appropriate? I'm not, you know, I'm looking at it from our standpoint, what oh, we there's need. Many, there's hundreds of these throughout the state of Massachusetts. Okay, so we're not talking about and holding tank. That's for their protection, not ours. No, no, not, it's for theirs, not ours. Okay. So. But back in the day, to the policy they're speaking specifically, yeah. there were eight-foot tanks, four-foot tanks. There was no small E1s. Okay. So they asked for the 48 hours, and there was probably so no provision for so generators or nothing. So they asked for the 48 hours. So in other words, the, the, the landscape has changed since that policy was yes. put in place. So, so, yes. so this policy is outdated here? That's, yeah. That's What's the date on it? Originally, it was done in 1998. Yeah. When we revised okay, it. So. I don't see the date on it. Yeah. It just... Last page. Oh, should be on the last page. It should be a date. Yeah, 98. Yes. So back in 98, so the there was no E1 pumps to speak of. It was all tanks. So the, you put a tank, so the, you put a pump inside. <clears throat> so the landscape has changed so that the requirements that were in place back then aren't necessarily applicable today for the systems that are going in and what's being done. That's right. Today, these so, generators. So, but again, going back, the generator is for their protection, not ours. Correct. Is that correct? Correct. So if the thing, if they lose power, it backs up, it's going to be in their living room. That's right. And that's why we asked them to record so the homeowner knows that they're totally responsible for that station. Yeah. Totally. Okay. It's nothing to do with us. The maintenance of it, the repair of it, if the check valves go, that, that's all on them. Nothing to do with us. Hey, now, is that understood on your, your end? Absolutely. I, I think okay. we made that clear. But off the right, policy, no, I just we, want to make we, sure we that, that, that we're still, yes. everybody's talking apples to apples it's here. It's theirs. It's theirs, yes. Okay, absolutely. so that so that holding tanks, that's not a discussion. Okay, so we don't get into that nope. end of it. If they want generators, to put one, that's on them. Generators, we don't need to get into. That's not part of the discussion. No, sir. The only part of the discussion is tapping in whether we've got the capacity for them to pump in and the... the go ahead, Doug. Oh, you will. Russ, You'll you're going to be asked to come up to the mic. Yeah, you got to come up to the mic and yeah. Yeah, identify yourself. So. Yeah, Please. Russ, I'm not that formal. Give it a break. Uh, good evening. My name is Russ Kleekamp. I'm an engineer. I work with the wastewater treatment plant. We've done a lot of work on the force mains out there, so we are. I am familiar with exactly this area, and I was just kind of listening to everything before I figured out whether or not I want to raise my hand and put my two cents in. But... Um, so a couple of things I heard. One was a discussion about tapping a live main. It's in a perfect world of engineering, you generally don't want to tie force mains together because of these exact situations we're talking about. In this case, Heinz and Depot come together at a Y, and that singular main goes to the plant. So we're talking about tying into that singular main. So there's some current concerns that, if I was the homeowner, I'd want to share and just know about this, is that because we cannot isolate any one of those two mains, if either Heinz or Depot shuts down, then the sewer service at your property won't work. It's not a high probability because there's generators, backup, things like that, um, but just something to be aware of. As far as the actual construction, um, you, can, you can tap mains. It's, done, it's not done all the time for mains this size, but it is done. Where you run into issues is usually operator error when they're tapping the main itself. So if they don't have the bit perfectly perpendicular to the pipe, if the bit is dull when they go to tap it, then you can get these longitudinal cracks. Then you start chasing these cracks, and I speak from experience because I've been around this. So what may be a good suggestion is to also have the applicant provide who their contractor is performing this work and what their qualifications are. It doesn't have to be lengthy, but just where have you done this before? And just so something so we know that the person doing it is qualified. When we shut down the Heinz force main to do the bypass, um, it took four pumper trucks just for that pump station. Uh, depot's roughly the same size, so if there was an uh oh situation, you'd be at least eight or ten pupper trucks, and I'd strongly recommend, not just for this project, but in any event, if either one of these two pump stations goes down, a contingency plan, a what-if plan, what are you going to do if something bad happens? Because there are something, if something breaks out there, who's the pumping outfit you're going to call? What manholes are you going to suction out of? Have the old pro whole protocol lined up so, worst case, if th something does happen, uh, we have all that set up. 
It does happen quite a bit where individual services tie into force mains like we're talking about tonight. Again, in a perfect world, you wouldn't want to see it, but there's really no gravity system nearby that you can tie into. Uh, so as long as everything's done properly and within the regulations of the town by a qualified contractor, um, it can be done, but again, there's in inherent risk. Now, I'd also be interested or would suggest that if you do have a contractor that's going to do this work, to let the contractor know that there is a significant potential that this pipe is deteriorated. How comfortable are you working on this pipe? Because a contractor who is working on an 18-inch force main that thinks it may be deteriorated, it's, it's, it's dicey. Again, I don't mean to complicate this issue further, but these are just a few things that um, we may want to have sorted out ahead of time. It's a good point, because in Mike's decision, that's why he asked for a collar to be on the pipe, like at the well, distance, to protect that. Yeah. Based on what you just said, Russ, uh, I think it would be uh, one qualification I would have is that prior to uh, them doing anything, that we have a meeting yeah. with you, with Guy, with uh, them. You can't, you know, the there are. To go over sure. anything and everything. And again, I have, I have, I apologize. I have nothing to do with this project. I'm not trying to be a roadblock, but just a few suggestions to give people peace of mind, you know, when it, when it does move forward. No, I appreciate that. We are our guide. Uh, I mean, um, I, maybe a consideration you might want to look, think about doing it at night when the flows are less. Again, it might be a higher construction cost, but it's going to yeah. be a lot less flow in case something does go wrong. The callers do help, absolutely. Well, There's I mean, saddles. I think that kind of discussion would be more apropos if we're sitting around the table just sure. for that particular. And not after a major rainstorm. Yeah. Right. Okay. I'll be quiet that, now. Thank no, you. No, that's fine. Thank, Thank you, you, Russ. I appreciate it. So we have three sets. We have three companies online. Source. Uh, we have we have um, uh, out of Lakeville. We got company out of Lakeville, company out of Taunton, and we have a company down the Cape. So we have plenty of access. Source has tankers and pumpers. Has probably has well, probably I mean, thirty or forty. So we do have. But that. I, I hear what what we Russ have. is saying, and it'd be good to have that plan written. We already out, do. We have to have it for emergencies so anyway. That, that plan's in place. So, all right. So that that plan's that's, in place. That problem is covered. Absolutely. Okay. That plan's in place. But you, you would want to know exactly which manholes you for yep. example four trucks can't pump out of one manhole there'd be there'd be no man i would go directly to the what i would do is i'd go directly to the what comes into the pump station drop one in the manhole i've got a bypass at heinz i would throw one in the truck i would take one to the wet well itself i would just keep up with it because well, everything comes into manholes <clears throat> into the pump station so we already when we about five years ago we did a major plan on what if we had lost our pump stations and we have that all written up and we have pump stations we also have contractors for pumps so that's that's standard for i mean we've done that generally speaking okay. for everything so we would look at that I mean, so, not, so that's under control yeah it's under control that's to the done. degree of the limitations of the station itself okay I so mean, the only the I only no manholes other than the, the only issue out there would be the having a, a meeting with uh, with you all and with the contractor that would do it and with them to the work contractor out the, it'd be a the pre construction meeting before right. they actually got into it yeah. go, ahead. go ahead peter is that included in the hundred thousand dollars what all the trucking I'm thinking, so it, or is the hundred thousand just the repair? No, hundred thousand. In his, it's all the repair, and he says bypass, but the, but the lowest. So there's an unknown. There's a, it's got a slide because if you bring in eight trucks at two hundred bucks an hour per truck, so that's sixteen hundred bucks per hour. So what I'm saying, so that's what is that? And that would be the contingent. He's saying a day to the most if there was a break there because you get out right away. So, but if he's if he's saying bypass, we're not talking bypass now. You're talking pump trucks, trucks which. Okay, but there seemed to me when we talked bypass uh, earlier on a different project that bypass was far more expensive than pumper trucks. We did that, bypass that, that on the piping. Speech project. We did the yeah. job, we did bypass, and if you remember, yeah. we went from bypass to trucks because it was more timely, it yeah. was less expensive, right. and it was easy to deal with. So yeah. we now include bypass, we include trucks into bypass, because okay. going forward we're going to use right. more trucks than bypass, so it's, just it's, a, it's, it's the way to go. Just the terminology. Yeah, it, it's the way to go, it's all inclusive. Not the, not the actual. Yes, absolutely. So, okay. so you said the trucks would be how much? 200 bucks an hour. 200 bucks an hour. Eight trucks. Eight trucks. 48 hours. Well, the worst case. So, where'd you get for a number? <laughs> this six hundred thousand. No, that can't be. Well, maybe it's close. No, no. calculator. So, two hundred bucks an hour. Let's do one, and we multiply it times two hundred bucks an hour. Twenty-four hours. That's forty-eight. Forty-eight hundred. Ninety-six hundred. 
96. for two days. Yeah, and then, but he's, but you're gonna, gonna take that and multiply eight. Oh. Multiply by 10, 96,000. Yeah, 30, but 300,000. 300, yeah. But 300,000 <coughs> so, yeah. so 300, <coughs> massive 100, so. A million. That's worth it. <coughs> A million. Okay. okay. And let's hope we don't touch it. <coughs> And so, originally, Mike we talked to Mike as this guy because of the, the magnitude of the hundred thousand. There's not many companies that would do it. Not many companies are going to touch an eighteen inch. He said there was four companies he knew of that were capable of doing an eighteen inch. <coughs> but it's a specialty. Not just anybody. I wouldn't have a local contract to do it. You say two hundred bucks an hour, right? We're paying two hundred bucks an hour for a truck. Okay, for, for eight. I mean, I'm looking at you know ballpark. You know, looking at maybe two hundred thousand if you're doing ten trucks. Yeah, so for 48 fine. hours. So <clears throat> max, that's, and I'm using that's 10 as instead of eight. Huh? Well, so that's not some, repairing, some, that's just pumping. Some, like I said, three, but yeah. whatever, you, whatever you feel the number should be, because we have to cover in the event of, so yeah. it should be bonded. Whatever you think that number should be. Well, based on those, on what I'm looking at, if you're looking at 48 hours, then if we look at 200,000, we'd probably be. Per connection. They're going to be cutting that pipe twice. Does it make any difference? You, this, yeah, but we're just giving them one permit. This is only one. The next cut's going to be the same story. So this is a cut for which one of the three homes? No, let, let's clarify that it's important. Each cut, each lateral is $18,000 less the cost. So there's two. So you're going to have two taps. Two separate taps. Each but tap this one project? That's right. Each tap yeah. carries the exact same risk. How close are they physically going to be to one another? I didn't measure it. I, I honestly don't know. I, I, was, I was thinking 25, 30 feet, but we can't be any closer than that. So they're going to have to spread it out. And I think that's... Uh, what, did, did, what for, there's one connection for lot four yep. because it's ice separated by wetlands in between... Uh, lot five and six, so it's, be so it's about 300 20. feet. Don't, some, 25, so we're good. It's far enough away. It, okay. I mean, no. 20 or 30 feet, that would scare the hell out of me. No, it's it's on said, the order of several hundred feet. Yeah, he said less, no less than, so, I mean, he wouldn't want anything close. He doesn't want anything close on that. Because, and I don't have, I'll have to ask him for what he recommends for how long he wants that sleeve. I don't know what this okay, is, so that's, he said it has to be done to protect that pipe. It okay, so that's, that's a workable thing. I, I think the basic discussion right now is how much should the bond be. And, and yeah, absolutely. And they're responsible for the road all that, so that's not on us, so that's them. You know, I so would, what are you saying, a quarter million? I'd say 200,000. Per is, cut. Is that covered? No. That covers per the cut, trucking no. Hammer? In total. In total, See, I, I have, disagree with that. Hmm? I think you need more, Jim. I just think you're you're cutting it too slim. Okay. You know. We're putting a lot of people at risk here. What kind of number? Bucks. Give me a number. She came up with a good one, 200,000. Yeah, so it, it's about, I, 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 these numbers are confusing, but I get about $120,000, $130,000. Am I missing something? We, we did the, the math on the, the trucking. Yeah. Um, yeah. 10 trucks at 48 hours at $200 an hour. 248000 250000 Comes out, I, I got 96000 Yeah, so what am I missing? $96,000. So that's, that's 100000 right. Yeah. Yeah. It could be. So I, what I'm saying is, uh, right. 20, I, I got uh, 40, 24 hours at 200 bucks an hour. So I took $200 multiplied by 24. Anyway, it's just 100,000 just in case they have to truck. 100,000 to repair the pipe if it is broken. So it's 200,000 per cut. That's right. Right. And there's two right. cuts. If I might make a suggestion, if it's possible yeah. to do both on the same day, then, um, but you're gonna have to ordinate through traffic the whole nine yards. That's going to be a you know, talk to the police, missile maintenance. You have to coordinate that with 
I have no problem, but you, that road is, is a vital road, and I can't give you, you know what I mean, I can't grant sure. that. Sure. I'd like to have powers to be to see if you can do that. All I'm saying, if, if it's possible, perhaps we could have two separate conditions. One, if it's possible to do the two in one day, uh, to limit it to a $200,000 bond versus if they're going to be on separate days, then. I think the bond is because of the cuts, not the days you do the work exactly. on. It's how many times are you going to tap into that force main, and that's what we want to bond. It's Whether risk. you do it in one day or a week apart, there's still cut, two cuts that have to be it's the risk. accommodated. Sure. It's just a risk. Uh, and, and again, as Russ had said, you know, the contractor plays a heavy role in this because if it doesn't do his job, then we're all on the hook. So anyways, that's... that's well, the you risk. could do, get the $200,000 bond, we're talk, do we're one. We're talking a, a bond of 200000 whether we're talking a one cut or three cuts, if there's an issue, do we care which particular cut created the problem? No. If we get, if we do so have the if first we've got cut, a bond the for the whole thing, yeah, we're not doing the second. What the hell difference does it make? Well, if the first cut I don't is six, I understand the, the the this rationale there. Uh, it, to me, it seems like it's it's duplication of. Well, also let's say, and not, one of the things I'm trying, I don't really have an answer for. Let's say we do tap it. Yeah. What happens three a month later when it, they they go? Whose responsibility is that? I, I want that bond to be extended I, for that. I too. thought you said six months. Yes. That's so okay. it's their response. So that bond's going to well, be held. So again, I, it, it may be enough. But if they both go, then you've got to double it. I don't, that's all I'm saying. If they both go, worst case scenario. So you got it in the ground. Three months later, they both blow. Where do you go from there? Or they could get a bond for one, wait six months, and, and, use, and get a bond for the second one. They don't all have to be bonded at the same time. They just have to be bonded prior to, to the cut being made. The bottom line for me is I, I just don't want the town to be responsible for repair and all that goes with it. But let's, well, but let's break that down into something that they can deal with. Uh, I mean, the, the, mm -hmm. all the rest of that is nice, fine, and well, and I agree with you, however, comma, they need something to deal with, you know. What kind of a bond, how big a bond, how long is it going to be, and what's it covering? So go back to the statement. Mike Stein said $100,000. Okay. The lowest. The lowest. So that's the repair. Uh, well, yeah, so we still need to establish that. that. So you added that number, so whatever you feel, you go. I, absolutely. Oh. So if you think if, you, if you've, you've got 100000 for the repair, and that's the lowest, and you get ninety-six thousand. No, the hundred thousand for the pump. For the so trucks. You covered it. So it if you said uh, twenty-five, uh, uh, yeah. You know it's going to break on a Sunday or an evening. It's not going to break during the work hours. You know that. Well, not if that's not the day they do it. Well, it, it, I'm saying if it happens two to three months afterwards, even. Oh. I, that's not their fault. No, I know that. No, but but I'm that's, just, wait I'm, a minute. They're, they're that's I'm what just, the bond's going to cover that. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm just telling you. Assurance that it's going to yeah, work. But, I mean, I mean go and it breaks. You can't hold them up on the bond for that. What I'm saying is $100,000 is the least amount we should ask for. So mm -hmm. I'm saying even a $200,000 bond, I feel a whole lot more comfortable with. Oh, at minimum. That's all I'm saying. Okay. I, no argument. What do you think, Sandy? I'm fine with the two hundred thousand per cut, with a six month with six month warranty on the cut. And if you do it at the same time, then it would just be the one. No, no, no. Each each cut could break. One could break and not the other. But if they're doing it at the same time, you wouldn't have to have the trucks twice. That's what I was suggesting. If we do it, if it's possible to coordinate it so that they're, they're both done on the same day, that's, that's all. And, and again, that would be we contingent be upon. Yeah. Yeah. And it, the, the hundred thousand dollars to the repair is per repair. If you, if it breaks on the first one, they're not going to touch the second one. Touch the second one. We will be there. We won't allow it. Yeah. And, and it is, and the, as you look at finances, it's one mobilization. If there's so no guys, other way for them to cut in and us I'm to be prepared of. for the other projects on this street, I'm aware there's of. no other way for the, us to, to cut in once and run a, a parallel pipe for them all to cut into that we can isolate. No. 
That I'm aware of. I mean, I, the engineers could, but no. The answer would be no. They, they tap in, tap in, tap in. Because isn't this not the same main, main that Boy, could very be tapped on if we put in the um, police station down there? It is. Well, actually, it is. Police station is going down there. Mind it have? If I said if. Police station if, won't go there because that's where we're going to take and use for the groundwater discharge. Oh, we can, we can pile that underneath their parking lot. Keep in mind, anything done on Minot Ave is a force main. Okay. Anything. So the school, will, the school will be a force main. That's right. The two yeah, snow yeah. buildings, the new snow building the will be a force main. Absolutely. Anything done on Minot Ave is a force and main. And anything is done with those four lots next to the condominiums could be force mains. Because there's four privately owned lots yeah. between we'll the Minot we'll School and the death. condos. That could be no developed. Way. So we have the condos that are on the force main. We have the aging home that's on the force main. Uh, no, John's on the Force Main, the school's mm -hmm. on the Force Main. Um, we have a couple of residents on the Force Main. It's, it's, it's going to be like Swiss cheese. It's quite a bit. Unfortunately, it's one of the few undeveloped pieces of property along Mine and Ave. And we can't do gravity, I, that I'm aware of. Um, okay. or, um, it's seven, it's seven thirty. Can we do something? <laughs> It's we, uh, I know what you're saying, and I agree with you. But. Peter? I make a motion we approve the connection with a $200,000 bond. And the conditions? Collar? Right, with the conditions, uh, we, and with, uh -uh. With the conditions we discussed. With all of the engineering conditions that you... Okay. So there's well, only one $200,000 bond for two right. cuts? Correct. Hopefully they'll be able to do, be done at the same time so that it will, if there's the separate times, we'd have to have a separate bond. That do you have good. a contractor in mind? We're going to rely on uh, Guy and his, his recommended list. Uh, yeah, I'll have to get a There's four contractors in this big enough. There's, I mean, there's contractors uh, that okay, definitely. You've got a list for them. Well, that, 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 that definitely have that's, that That's fine. Okay. We have a motion. That we know. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, all in favor. Okay, for the record, just aye. 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 Nay. Okay, okay so the motion is for two, one, $200,000 bond, plus all the engineering stipulations that are for safety reasons for that Right? Do we? Ha well, there was nothing to say how long that bond is held for. Six months. Okay. That was part of our discussion. But it wasn't part of the motion. It was motion, not part but. of the motion. So we only motioned the two one two hundred thousand dollar bond plus the engineering stipulations for safety and. It's been six months on the bond. Well, no, it wasn't in the motion. So can you amend, can you amend the motion? Yes. Okay. Yeah. What's your point, Sandy? We didn't, we didn't put it in the motion. There was a time frame. What didn't we put in the motion? The, motion, the time frame for the bond to be held. For six months. For six months. That did not go in the motion. Okay. Okay, that's exactly I withdraw my second. I withdraw my motion. Okay. You make the motion. I make a motion that we approve the, the connection for, two, for four, lots four, five, and six with a $200,000 bond that's held for six months, plus all the engineering recommendations for that connection. Second. All in favor? It's a lot easier aye. if I aye. keep my motion. I'll do, I'll, aye. Thank you all. I know it's a tough decision, but um, Aren't you so glad hopefully all these safe safeguards will work out. So if you had brought popcorn, it would have been better. All right, thank you. Okay. Hmm? Uh, where am I now? Okay, Guy, we're back on Second, you. Second, um, articles. Again, I know it's on the- It's not on the agenda. We did bring it forward I, last week, I, so I, I- I just want to make, 
so we're going to talk about the special Springtown meeting articles, but I'm going to make a note it's not on the agenda. What do you want? He wants it back. What? I think I sent it on the ship. Oh, the engineering stuff? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll do yeah. a little tap it to that and then. Yeah. Is that what you're looking for? No. The, the thing you read off the mic. It's just me now. Yeah. I, I, I gave it to you, kid. Oh, then it's over here somewhere. Maybe, maybe he's got it. Uh, it what uh, is it? it? It's an email. And a chain. Yeah. I'll be another one. No, he's got it. He, I'll send it up. You should have it. Because there's a whole chain discussing the entire project. So I'll send you everything. Sorry about I know what you said. And I don't know why you're touching the thing. But that's not the issue. Well, it's, this is this, the agenda doesn't cover it. They did nothing on the agenda. I wasn't around. This agenda is There's so agenda. vanilla. There's nothing on the agenda. Yeah, it put Leonard Street on it. Okay. That's it. Everything and else is a cut and paste except for a date. I asked Jim when he said, uh, yeah, I kind of forgot. I said, well, but I got, we got to talk about the articles because we got to deadline yes, Monday. Yes, because we have to have the articles ready for the capital planning meeting on Thursday. So it, but we have to have it done for special spring closing by the selectmen on Tuesday. Yes. Yes. Who gets to write the articles, by the way? Sorry? Who writes the articles once we approve it? Because I don't want it right into the record. Mm -hmm. you know, you're Bring better. me back my sandwich. <laughs> Well, the narrative is one thing. It's the motion, is the article so, in the motion that becomes difficult when you have yes. bonding involved. But if I become generic enough, then the uh, town attorney will correct the wording for the bonds. Right. But we can't blame them. We, we think there's four mm -hmm. articles pending. Sorry about that. <clears throat> okay. So we had talked about two articles, one for the uh, D night filters and one for C Street to complete that job um, that I'm aware of. I think it's the only two we talked about last time. Russ, thank you for jumping in there. No problem at all. It's uh I always try to solve problems when I can. I did Well no, it's 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 nice to hear the engineering point of view. Sure. sure. Mm. One thing I forgot to say, though, too, is strongly suggest, and I'm sure the contractor will do this, is have all your spare repair parts on hand. Absolutely. That will minimize downtime if an accident happens, minimize costs. Also make sure they're the right repair parts, so too. You talk so. about a company like Robert Auer who yeah. walk in and all that. So there's only few contractors that have that wherewithal to do an 18-inch force made. It's not a run-of-the-mill force name. It's right. not a run-of-the-mill company. There's only four that, that they would recommend. So yeah. uh, Robert Hour, they would come in there and they'd blow that out and they'd have experience. They've been all over the, uh, you know, the state doing it. So I don't. They also have they their own it. pumper trucks, too. Uh, they have everything. So That's in an ideal condition. That's right. They have it, and everything. And a nice piece of pipe. we got a 50-year-old corroded pipe. But it still all has to go out for bid, so who knows who's going to win it. Well, if the private. No, that's the private. That's not that's us. Private. Oh, because it'd be the private it's up to them. Weekend. That's right. It's on them. We recommend, and we can oversee, and we can say not that contractor, but it's on them. Okay. Yeah. On them. That's their cost. Articles. Their... Which do you want to attack first, please? Uh, the EQ basin. I'm sorry, the D-night filters. Okay. That's my understanding. We're looking at $2 million? Yes. With the discussion that it's going to be the money to be borrowed? Well, that's a good question. I, I, I got to tell you, 
Um, we have been accepted for the, uh, I think it was $9 million SRF funding. So we have that funding. Um, Put on the intended use plan. That's right. So we have to accept it and not accept it. Yep. But I'm thinking, to be frank with you, that um, that this $2 million should come out of retained earnings. We should spend it ourselves. All right. I'm going to ask the question. How much do we have in retained earnings Seven that we million can, dollars. That we Seven can million spend? Dollars. Seven million dollars. Seven million in retained earnings that we can spend. Absolutely. How much do we have in total? Nine, I think it is. I, well, we I think the real number is 11, but I think because yeah. some of us put aside for uh, uh, the betterments, but what we have retained earnings that is certified is seven plus million dollars. So you're thinking that denitrogen filter two million should come from retained earnings? I believe so, yes. I don't want to reline the pipe before we let them cut into it. It's, we, yeah, that's, yeah. Got seven million dollars. Well, can then we can we now talk about the C Street or what do you call it, Miracove? It's Miracove C Street. That's uh, Miracove. The the, the um, lining of and, and manhole repair of all. And that's eight. one million sixty thousand. Yes. And to be clear, the six hundred thousand that was granted at Special Spring nineteen was from a budget, and because the budget closed without the funds being used, the funds are no longer available. No, but they went to retain earnings. But yes, you're right, they're no longer they, available. They are no longer, so yeah, the 600,000 right. that had been approved for all intents and purposes were nev on. was never approved. That's so correct. we need to look for the whole project. On, right. 1, 600, 1, 60, correct. One zero six zero zero. Yes. Okay. And you want to do that retained earnings? I would like to, I, 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 and I, yes, okay. I would like to. The next thing we were talking, you gave us four pieces of paper for capital items, and one was um, 200,000 for groundwater discharge evaluation. evaluation. I think it was a ballpark. I think the real number was like 150, 120, but yes. Well, we saw that as 115, but you originally on your capital request said 200,000 for groundwater evaluation. So the, the, it right. would come down to what the con I sent you the contract. Yes, you did. And it's 115, so that would be what we're looking for. So you're looking for 115 instead of 200. Yes, that's what the contract K. is. Again, so from retained earnings. This contract? I would like to. Because we have to spend down retained earnings, and I don't know what that limit is, but I think when we get the financial advice, it'll be, but I think it should all come out of retained earnings. What were you looking for? You were looking for something? You asked Donna if she had it. Well, the, Peter. The, the, the same thing that you've got in front of you, the departmental sheet, yeah. project okay, sheet. Okay, so you have them all. He does not have them. Would you like a copy? Can I have the original? <laughs> you, may have, you may have my copy. I have one in my cap plan folder. Guy, is this for that particular piece of property, this groundwater evaluation? Are we talking about uh, groundwater discharge? Yes. On this, that's that uh, property off Minot Avenue. That and others. So to do due diligence, the engineer is responsible that we know about that property, but look at all others yeah, um, and the conditions of all others. Yes. This is the one for off of Minot Avenue, Great Neck Road area. And other areas. It's a complete analysis of every area that may be um, usable. Do we know any area that's available other than what we're looking at? They'll figure it out. They'll, look, they'll do a top You know what we need for size and locations and distances? Farther. The place okay. on Oak Street, they're going to take the house down and put it there. We thought we'd go around to Oak Street. We thought it would be very viable. Uh, Oak Street, we think, is the best uh, area for it, but that, they'll be able to discuss that later. So, just so as long as you don't, you're going to tell me mine at Ave. Mine at Forest is where <laughs> you're going to put forest. it. Because there is a stipulation that if it's for. <laughs> well, it's town property, so it probably, but if it doesn't meet the conditions and if it doesn't brick right, and if it doesn't meet the study, then it's out. So they would evaluate that and others okay. to make sure we have. That's just okay, I'm sorry, Russ. You've been you want to add something here? Sure, thank you. Um, just the, the way the proposal was structured, it was to look at up to three sites. Okay. And what we do with each, we, we know of two sites, the one that was mentioned off Minot Avenue. Um, I believe we're going to look at the, some sites that are on the treatment plant grounds, and then a third site. Um, when you start with an evaluation like this, there's five or six or seven criteria that you look at right off the bat. It's fairly quick to do that may discount a site very quickly if there's certain if it's in certain regulated areas, things like that, flood zones, so on and so forth, that we just kind of run down that. Um, and then once we pick a preferred site, that's when we do the actual 
hydrogeologic evaluations. We have to do like a giant perk test, basically, right where we think we're, so we do need access to where we think the beds are going, and um, we'll do our perk tests there, a couple different types of perk tests. And then um, we'll do a groundwater modeling study, a particle tracking, to show where the nitrogen will end up going. Um, and then that may or may not dictate wherever the nitrogen ends up going, we may have to offset that with expansion of the collection system. Um, because if we put additional nitrogen into a sensitive area, we have to take it out the way we take it out is by extending a collection system. So fortunately, unfortunately, if the, when the discharge bed or when the groundwater discharge gets constructed, the other component is we have to do an expansion of the collection system that also discharges nitrogen to the same, uh, to the same receiving water body. So you take out septic tanks. Do we not have this is all treated water, so it is as low in nitrogen as we can possibly make it as low in nitrogen. You explain that to the um, environmentalists and others, but to, yes. It, but so, yes. it's Corinne. no different than putting the water into the river or putting the water into this ground ground. It could system. be argued that it's going to be less because it attenuates, but I'm not going to go there. So, no, but, but it's, I just don't want you to think we're going to be putting high, <laughs> higher nitrogen using this groundwater discharge than what we do for the river. It's the same no, treated water. But right. keep so in mind, it's, said, it's an yes. added Correct. contribution to the river, right? Because we're going over here, it's going to come to the river, and we have a limit there anyways. It's added contribution so it's to offset. some type of water yes. system, yeah. water table, which could eventually go into the river. Or recharge it, could, it has a lot of benefits but, but the, okay. the one of the offsets in talking to DP today there's definitely going to be an offset it's, it ain't going to fly without an offset okay I'll tell you that so there will be an offset now okay we're looking right now then guy at all three of these items coming out of retained earnings I, I am okay Do you want to talk about the fourth one that's been requested or is that's, it too soon? we're going to get to that one okay. got, but because that's not going to be that's not going to be the same funding no Hey, can I ask a question, just separate? Sure. This discharge water, what would be your next filter system in order to make it drinkable? You have to go through uh, like a tertiary treatment, an advanced filter, for example. Uh, Kidneys. I think it's the, the Las Vegas uh, treatment plant offers a tour, and at the end of the tour, they offer a sample of the treated water because it has to get discharged. But I mean, it's, it, isn't it basically to filter it through sand? It's, uh, we don't. I haven't designed one for it. I've seen TV shows on it. It's about the extent of my education. But it is a, it, yes, it is a filter system that goes through a certain type of media that does take out the last bits of, it's very, very difficult it's and very finer. costly. It's yeah. finer. It's, it, it's finer than sand. Well, I'm just associating with yeah. it. You, you're dumping it into sand so that by the time it gets down through the sand, it's virtually drinkable. The state will argue with you. I'm not drinking it, and you're not drinking right. it, but we can say that. You can say it. And it definitely has value. But if you, if you put it through some type of filtration, not reverse, whatever, and you get to go through membrane, you can remove fine particles, even maybe even dissolve solids, um, so you can get a better product that can be drinkable. But that's the whole expense you have to be for. Yes, it, but it can be done. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, before we go, Which before we go here? on to uh, the floor? I forget the this floor. last item here, uh, I, I'm going to stay with the three we're on right now. Okay. I just want to get a total. We're looking at three million one hundred seventy-five thousand. That's the number I was looking at. All out of retained earnings. Yes. Okay. Do you want to do each motion individually, each article individually, or all together? Uh, we probably should do them individually in case we get any flack back. Okay, I make a motion. We submit a, uh, we, we have to, the selectmen get to say whether or not we put it on the article. So you want to say we uh, request that the selectmen place on the special Springtown article, spring, Springtown Warren an article for $2 million from retained earnings for denitrification filters. Yes, that's for engineering and construction. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. Okay. Say that again, Sandy, please. Okay. Uh, make I make a motion that we request the selectmen to place on special spring 2009, 2020 town meeting an article for $2 million 
for, from retained earnings for the denitrification filters, including engineering and construction. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, four zero zero. Okay. I make a motion that uh, we submit to the selectmen to place on the special spring 2020 um, warrant an article for $1,060,000 from retained earnings for the Mira Cove project? Yes. <coughs> For a second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Four zero zero. I make a motion that we submit to the selectmen for inclusion into special spring to 2020. 20, Town meeting an article for $115,000 from retained earnings for a groundwater evaluation project. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Four, zero, zero. What was that amount again, Sam? $115,000. 15. We were looking for $150,000, but the document that we got in the mail today said $115,000. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now we've got the inexpensive one. Okay. Forced main replacement. So, and this is going to be encompassing planning and design, and it's for a replacement of the forced main. It Mr. will be Mr. put Mr. in. Mr. Chairman, we could probably take that to the fall town meeting because we're still designing. Okay. So, so it may be wise because they're not we'll done with the design. We'll okay. Then I would suggest we put this one off till fall town meeting because they haven't completed the design yet. Yes, it's been discussed that we keep asking for money and don't do anything with it. So they want it, the money closer to deliverables. Is that a way to put it? Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Russ. Thank you, Russ. Thank you, Thanks, Russ. Russ. Thanks a lot, Russ. No Cannolis. Next, next, next meeting. <laughs> <laughs> not, not until he's looking for money. We owe him now. <laughs> Outside, I haven't eaten anything all day. Oh, God. You better hope they're not waiting outside for you. <laughs> Good night. Thank you. Thanks very much, Russ. Appreciate it. So you, you, you're putting off this force main? Yep. So well, Because we're, we're actually designing it. Yeah. So I'm not going to be ready to at least the fall to build it. So we don't need so no sense in, don't I mean, I, to be frank, I, and I, I would allocate it and have it and work into it, but the town seems to think that you want to get to the day you're going to use it, and I have a problem with it. Whatever the town yeah, feels, we'll do that. I think we already so. have hundred thousand dollars set aside for the force main study. For the final leg of the engineering yeah. of the force main. Are, are we doing anything towards it? Or Absolutely. We have to, do We're we surveying have, right now. Uh, uh, JC engineers saw the survey a couple of days ago. The weather has been nice. Uh, we're surveying that entire line. They're doing. They're they're working. They're absolutely. Where where are they running it? They're going to run from Narrows Pump Station to the park under the river. Yep. And on Minot Ave. They're going to go from the Narrows to Bessie Park. They're going to shoot from the Narrows under the road to Bessie's Park. Yeah. Then they're going to shoot from Bessie's Park under the road to Minot Ave. And then Minot Ave right to the plant. And the reasoning is, is that the Narrows Bridge is now submerged. Our present force main is underwater quite a bit. Yeah. And it's deteriorated. And so it makes no sense to put it back there again. We need to move it so it'll be protected. In the event of a storm or some type of you know, bridge damage, the force main will never be compromised and we can continue to pump. So, so that's we're going to follow the, 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 the one that we were discussing earlier. We're going to follow that route? Yes, they're going to take a parallel that. Right now, uh, JC Engineering is looking into what we call where we're going to put the, the force main based upon what's in the road and all the topography and the whole nine yards. They're doing that right now. They're doing a complete survey all the way down, to, I believe, to Great Neck Road. And we'll have a concept of where it's going to go. Once that's done, then they'll design. And it's odd that same company is doing the same survey for the bike path along the same road. Absolutely. And, <laughs> I mean, their knowledge, for, it would make no sense to go to anybody else. Their knowledge of what they're doing is... I Absolutely. If they're doing the survey for but both companies. They never thought about going the other way up Sandwich Road? 
Um, that's a whole new ball game. We talked about it, but it would be, it would, it, no, because we'd still have to shoot from Narrows underneath and come up someplace in Sandwich Road. We'd have to find, we couldn't find a pit to come up in because of elevations, and we may have to go further up the hill, and then there's property. It was going to be a difficult do, so it just made sense to follow the route that we had. I'd like to get gravity on that road, but that's going to be difficult because of the elevations of the Yeah, the but water. it's gravity the other way. Yeah, I would send it somewhere, but yes, but it's I just can't. that I, I was looking at that, that, that it's you, you, you're on nobody's property, you know. So, uh, it, uh, so they, they've looked at both and this the, was golf the best. Course, the golf. Was the, so they're working on it. We're working on it now, and we want to get the final. Once the final design's done, then we'll we'll move forward with construction. But they're definitely working on it now. Um, All so. Right. I'm, I'm Actually, good. I just want to remind you that I'm working on the capacity you asked for all the houses. Yes. It's almost complete, so I'll, I'll wrap that up. Okay. I got the houses that are, you know, the, the single families, the duplexes, um, all the different developments that we've committed to. Um, I, I'll, I'll finalize it for you. Um, okay, great. I'll get it to you, but I'm definitely I'm working on it, so I'm not, I haven't forgot it. Well, I know you had a couple of things that interfered. Yeah, I was just, yeah, I just had a little, little hump in the road. Yeah. Yeah. That triple A tour that you took. Is yes, it was. Are you training a replacement? I, yeah, he's just, um, <laughs> you know, I got to tell you, um, I, I, my doctor will not let me travel to the conference because I'm at high risk. And most people, you know, those are sick, but um, my immune is so compromised. And now with the diabetes because of the drugs um, and me fighting to get my blood, it's still around 480 uh, sugar. So they don't want me to travel, I'm at a very high risk. And so they forbid me to travel. So I've asked her, you know, I'm getting the money back and the whole nine yards, but yeah, so it's- Is there it's anybody to go in your place to the conference? Uh, no, no. So there's really, yeah, think about replacement. So you say to yourself all the time is, you know, what do you do? Do you, do you slow down? Do you, do you retire? What do you do to, you know, to protect your health? I, I'm gonna beat this. Um, the metal system, uh, my, my osteitis, the, the, the disease is, is kind of stagnant. My muscles are, you know, they're, right now they're as weak as they're gonna get. Um, so we're kind of excited about that. The neurologist is, is happy, he's comfortable. Um, uh, so the question now becomes the medication I'm on is causing other problems. And so if you remove it from the medications, does my citus come back? We don't know. So uh, I've met my neurologist, I met my prime, and I got my uh, rheumatologist next week, and we've got to put our heads together and make a decision as what's the best approach. Because presently, I'm going in the, uh, with the blood, uh, with the sugar, I'm going in a bad direction because it's going have to create a lot of issues. Have you been to Angel Memorial yet? I have not. I, I have not. But I hear it's gorgeous. So I hear it's gorgeous. So. <laughs> Um, so that's where we are, and, and so we're just going to keep fighting. I, I, I have a positive outlook. I think we're, we're going to look at it. It's just getting the numbers to work, just getting things to work. That's all yeah, it is, that's, getting things to work. That's the battle. But I tell you, four, I haven't been in a hospital for four or five days. It was five days. I can tell you how long. I, it's, it, was, it was quite an experience. But I had a view of the river. So you know, how bad can it be? The view would be much better if it was from Bessie Park. It would have been. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. Uh, Okay, unfinished business. Uh, yeah. Anything new on the Is charter? It? Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, was, before you close, I have a, I have something I'd like to talk to the board about that just came into my attention. So I'll wait for the end. Okay. All right. Uh, anything new on the town charter, Peter? That you might want to th throw at us? No. Okay. No. The the, the only thing that. Um, the, the, the only thing, that, the, the town charter didn't change much as far as 3-7, uh, which is what covers the sewer commission. And, and the only stumbling block we keep having is exactly uh, how is oversight of the enterprise fund interpreted. And uh, I, I think rather than just throw it around again, I, I would be just as well off until we wait for the town administrator and we get you know, a, a discussion with him, exactly how we look at that. Okay. C Street, we've just yes, we were passed the Warren article on that. Yes. Uh, the sump pumps are still out there. They're still illegal, and they're still cooking along. Yeah. Stone Path, anything new and different on them? Okay. Nope, nothing new and different. Okay. 
Were you going to request another EDU because of the usage? I did. I, I, did. I put another EDU. Just one? I did. I haven't. I've got to evaluate because so the key, key for that is there's no seats per se. They're not permit like they're serving food. Although they have banquets and all that, they put tables up, but it's not a so it's, it comes under the, under the under, presently under like a function hall. It's more what it is than a, yeah. than a restaurant and that type of thing. So it's one you do because it's a function hall. That's all. You can take the square point. footage and figure out what the capacity well, would be on that basis. Who 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 does that come to as a violation? What do you mean? Well, when they got their occupancy permit per se, what did they get it as? Uh, as a, it, it was put, it, when they got the, and this is from the town, it was a malt factory with a tap room to, for folks that are touring to sample the beer of some of their customers. That's what they were permitted for. So after that, they went back to the town and got these special permits to have functions. So it's all through the town. So they have permits to do yeah, these Yeah, they go to the town for these functions. Yeah. Yes. So, so shouldn't they be paying more EDU? So we added another EDU because before I added an EDU because of the function hall. I'm now calling it a function hall. So I added an EDU. Because that's what the EDU schedule calls for for function hall. Okay. But isn't that based on the capacity? Uh, no, seating capacity and so forth? No, it's because function halls have no cooking ability. They can cater in. So it's a different criteria. So all they're doing is, and, and I know, and, and we talk about revised need to use. I mean, it's, it's that a lot of, when I look at the list, I'm like, oh my goodness, I, this, it's confusing because I have a different view on it, but I have no place to put it on the list. Mm -hmm. There's no place to put it. Well, can't call it a restaurant. Can't call it a bar. <clears throat> we'll talk about it. Yes. Okay. Uh, any new homes connected? Uh, 11 Indian Neck connected today. Um, this one, uh, Rose Point, is connected this week. And that's all that I know of top of my head. So that's two more. And that was yes. all, we, that capacity was all included in our plans, correct? It was. Okay, so it was. Okay. And the EDU rates are still a football. Yes. Sandy. I have an email from an individual who is a um, installer and he paid for his license but his phone number was always wrong and he is asking that we do a consideration and give him uh, credit for last year's installation license and apply it to this year. He had no phone calls whenever someone reached out to him he says I've tried and can't get a hold of you because the phone number at the plant was wrong. So he's just asking that um, the last year's license cost be transferred to this year. It's now been corrected, but it didn't help him. He had no calls at all last year. Well, he had no calls with the correct number the year before, but I guess that's immaterial. Um, and, <laughs> and I asked him that he should review it, so like every contractor, to make sure that the number's correct. But whatever the, it's $165. Whatever the board's pleasure is, is the board's pleasure. Is this contract here? Here. Um, yeah, it's best to read it. He's uh, semi-retired, um, oh. putters around. So, uh, I mean, there was not a lot of business here before. I can show you what he's done well, in the last five years. Well, we realize there's the contract. <laughs> So you kind of do what you want to do, but I, I'm not I, putting the name out there. I'm just asking. No, I'm just asking for consideration as to because he got no calls last year, yep. and anybody tried to reach him was the wrong number. Yeah. Okay. Do we have a motion on that or anything? I don't, I don't know. How do you handle this? This is a request for a consideration. I think that should be turned over to the uh, sewer superintendent. And let, let him make the call? I've already told him that I wasn't going to give him his money back, but he had the right to come to the board, yes. as I tell everybody. And the board's saying it's your, it's your decision, it's your call. Okay. okay, that's done. And he'll watch this program and he'll Found hear me. this decision. Whip. When, 
I talked to the guy. I bought a license and paid the phone. We're not going to do it. Phone number. We're giving it what, back to guy. Yeah. I and paid for It only takes. All you have to do is call information to get the right number. If you wrote it down wrong. If you have the wrong number in advertisements in the newspaper, magazine, it's your responsibility. Mm -hmm. It's your responsibility, and it's straightforward. Check. He's I mean, saying Tony Lane has the wrong phone number. He's saying that we had the wrong. Yes, we have, on that list that we put out for contractors, that the wrong number was there. That's what he said. Is this the only letter you got? Yes, that's the only one. So I got. everybody else somehow got the right number. Yes, their all numbers are correct. That's yes. strange. Well, they changed his potentially. So I, I, I don't know, and I, it's, it's, it's. Did you tell him no? I did. Do you want us to say it also? I, what I, I just said, I, when I say no to certain things, I always tell folks, please, you have a right to bring it to the sewer commissioners because, you know, that's your next level of recourse. Do you want a motion? Yeah. Okay. Not at all. Waste of time. <clears throat> Are we okay, still under new business? Yep. All right. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, back on the 20th of, of February, we authorized the chairman to write a letter to uh, to the to Ken Buckman, you know, telling him to get in touch with us, discussing capacities and just what we can afford to take in. And uh, I want to read Jim's letter into the record, and then I think Jim would like to read the response. Dear Mr. Buckman, at the Board of Sewer Commissioners meeting February 20th, 2020, it was determined that the sewer plant is nearing its allowable capacity. The translation to this is that we will soon no longer be able to allow hookups to the sewer system. We would very much appreciate being informed of projects as they become considered before permits have issued. Shortly, these requests for sewer ins after the fact will be denied. Should you have any questions regarding this letter, our next meeting is March 5th, 2020, 630, at the Multi-Service Center, Room 320. Thank you. Jim Giberti, Chairman. And the response was? Got a certified letter back. How much did that cost? Four dollars and five cents when a phone call would have sufficed. So do we get a copy of that letter to Ken? If you have it. I said, did we get it in our packets? I no. don't believe no. so. I, don't have I didn't no. get a copy. Were they emailed to us or not? No. So I don't know if Peter got a copy. That. No, no, no. I had Jim. Do you want a copy? You can put it in the records and, and then email it back to all of us. Yeah, it needs to go to. Um, let's, let's go since to the it's file. being read, it needs to go in the file and be attached to this set of minutes. Mm -hmm. So the file. we'll do it that way. You've got the copy down at the office, anyhow, don't you? Yeah, she gave me a copy. Of the response. Right, right. she's already got that. So uh, I will put in the record that the letter to uh, the planner must be attached to this minutes. These minutes. Okay. Okay. And I, we received the letter back. As I say, uh, certified for four dollars and five cents. Why I don't know, but and essentially, some of he has listed three different areas of renewal of expansion, but with no idea whatsoever of what the capacities are they going to be looking for or anything else. So. <clears throat> uh, other than knowing that there's something that they're thinking about, uh, doesn't really help much. Uh, and I'd like to have that response also attached to our minutes. Would you like me to read it into yeah. the record? Yes. No, we're not going to read it. It's, she can put it in. It's too long. It's convoluted. So we have three areas that are being developed with no specific information to help us with capacity. Affirmative. And that's all he said, three areas, nothing, nothing else. Generic. Detailed the three areas. Generic. Hmm? He detailed the three areas, but it's a generic but, detail. Um, 
Guy, you have a copy yeah. of that, right? Yeah, you can read so it. So you'll give it to Christina. She for, it to attach to the Christina minutes. To file so he'll, the she'll minutes, be attaching yes. two documents to the set of minutes. I have the letter that Jim wrote. We get it on. We yep. have it in the computer, and the letter, the response, will attach to the to yep, the, to the uh, minutes. minutes and be done with yep. it. Yes, absolutely, yes, ma'am. No, I, I had sat with Mr. Buck uh, when I got back from the hospital. I think it was Tuesday, um, Mr. Buckland, and I. We were pretty clear on that we needed gallons. He did say that one of the projects would be the RFP will be back in and they'll have a better idea. And I said because to blanketly to be Littleton, yes, to blanket, to blanket say yes without knowing it, it doesn't make any sense and it's got to be done properly. So. And you've also had the uh, individual. Uh, hold up, guys. Uh, just so you're all aware, he's also had the individual who is opening the, or attempting to open up the beer production plant, is that what it is? Yes. Uh, in, but they didn't have the information that you're looking for, and they'll get back to you on that. That's correct. That's the one on Main Street? Right. Where Knowles. That's the only one that we're talking about. Well, the, That's right. Knowles used, is it Knowles? I used to be, I used to, I call it the fish market. So you could be the fish, oh, market. The fish market. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yeah. and we also have Navy Onyx, and that's been in the works, but that's back on the table. Next week, there'll be a letter requesting. Um, they already have a connection, so we'll talk about a great debt. Uh, 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 and it'll, it's in your packet, but I'll have them email it. They may not have, but I'll have them email it to you pre previous to next week's meeting, because it's pretty extensive. Okay. But we know we have one cannabis business has withdrawn from the town, so that frees up that capacity. Well, I don't know. Would they grant? Would they grant the capacity? Yeah, would they, uh, would, I've never seen that. Oh, there's been a lot of proposed cannabis that they haven't come forward with it. And what I'm recommending to Mr. Buckland before anybody comes into town and wastes their money for engineering and studies, they need to come here first right. to see what's doable and what's not doable. So not That's all, because it's fair to the developer. I want to put those in the. He has copies. He's got it. I have copies. Yeah, I gave him copies. So of that's all. And so we're, we're going to work through it. Mr. Chairman, he's also asked me to sit in front of that commission, I guess, the board there, whatever it is the board he's chairman of. Um, the development. The oh, development. Redevelopment, oh, the redevelopment authority. Yes, and explain to him our capacity issue. And I, I'd be more than happy to. And if Mr. Chairman wants to tag along, it would be great oh, to have you with to me. tag along. Yes. So I, when I set it up, he wants me to, and I, I think it would be a good okay. idea to you there, too. So okay. I would appreciate that. <gasps> Is it time? Okay, our uh, next meeting is the 19th of March, 2020, at 6.30 p.m. in this room. Can I make a motion that we adjourn? Thank God Donna's here. Second. <laughs> Second. I beat you. <laughs> Aye. Aye. I beat you. <laughs> Eight. Thank you, seven. ladies and gentlemen, for watching. We hope you push our Nielsen ratings up. <laughs>